Hi, I'm Mike Zill, Senior BI and Data Engineer at Cubit Consulting. In this video, I'm going to be going over Cognos Analytics 11.1.2, Integration with Jupyter Notebook. To start, I'd like to say that we at Qubit think of Cognos Analytics as more than just a BI tool, but rather as a platform that contains BI tools. Between the introduction of the exploration tool and visual insights in the past year, Cognos Analytics has enabled users to explore, understand, model, visualize, and most importantly, share these findings securely with others. This means that the platform socializes data engineers, data architects, analytics professionals, process experts, and consumers by keeping each party involved in the process of making actionable decisions with data. With that being said, the release of CA 11.1.2 introduced integration with Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is an application that enables users to share algorithms and visualizations produced by languages like Python and R. Now this is a huge value add to the solution as now data science and advanced analytics can be embedded with not only the CA platform, but within the process of developing analytics as well. More often than not, data science teams are siloed with analytics teams providing inputs and using outputs that the data scientists produce. Now within a single platform, data scientists become part of the analytics social cycle. Now integration with Jupyter Notebook includes being able to do things like create notebooks directly in CA without leaving the interface, import data sets directly from Cognos into a notebook, use visualizations from notebooks using libraries like Matplotlib in dashboards, and use data sets generated from a notebook, like the results of a predictive forecast, to create visualizations in CA. This will allow us to integrate customers' existing and future algorithms into Cognos. First things first, I'm going to show you how I have the Cognos Analytics Jupyter server set up on a Linux box. And then I'm going to go through a full yet abbreviated analytics cycle with a sample data set. So Jupyter Notebook needs to be installed on Linux. And I'm running Cognos Analytics on my Windows machine. So I've created a virtual machine with Hyper-V, installed Ubuntu, and that's where I'm hosting my Cognos Analytics Jupyter server. I've installed Docker CE and then installed the Cognos Analytics Jupyter server. I've built, installed, and started the Cognos Analytics Jupyter server as well as checked that the Docker containers have been created appropriately. Importantly, I've also logged into my Cognos server on the VM. This allows my Cognos Analytics server and my Cognos Jupyter server to be able to talk to each other. I've also looked up the IP address of my virtual machine because I'll need to configure my Cognos Analytics environment to point to the Jupyter server. If you haven't changed any configuration settings, the default port will be 8000. Now I'm going to go back to Cognos on my Windows machine. I'm going to go to Manage, Configuration, System, and Environment. And as you can see, I've plugged in the IP address of my Jupyter server. One last thing I want to ensure is that I have the notebook capability assigned to my account. So if I go and take a look at the capabilities that are assigned to me, I see that notebook is part of those. And so now I should be able to go to new and create a notebook. And now I'm able to use the Jupyter notebook interface directly in Cognos. Go ahead and test out, make sure everything's working all right. And print hello world. Now I'm going to demonstrate going through an abbreviated analytics cycle with the sample data set I have. I'm going to go ahead and create an exploration and select my data. I've uploaded a spreadsheet on real estate data. This data includes the price of a house, which is the dependent variable, and a number of independent variables, including age of house, latitude, longitude, closeness to convenience stores, etc. 
By looking at the visualization automatically generated by the exploration tool, I can start to see correlations with variables. What I really want to be able to tell is the predictive strength of the housing attributes on the housing prices. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a driver analysis visualization. From here, I'm going to drag in the price of the house into the visualization. And now it's going to automatically calculate the predictive strength of each variable. So the age of the house and the closeness to convenience stores seem to be strong predictors for the value of a house. Now what I'm getting from this is that I can rule out that there's a single variable driving the price of a house, but rather a combination of variables. If I click on these individual drivers, I can see how they affect the price of a house individually. This tool is really great because it allows you to bypass some of the exploration activities you might have to do in Python, which are a little more tedious. So now I would go ahead and create a notebook However, I've already created one for this instance. I'm going to go ahead to look at my real estate notebook. I've imported pandas and numpy, as well as a linear regression model. I'm going to stick with just simple multiple linear regression for this example. And I've used the CA data connector to import my data set. As you can see, my data looks as it should. At this point, I'm using all of my housing attributes in the model. However, this can be adjusted by weight and or excluding, including certain housing attributes as time goes on. I've also run some statistics on the model to see how well it's predicting. And then I can go ahead and see what the values predicted are using that model. I'm going to go ahead and run this model on a validation data set I have. Now I'm calling this data feed because this could be a database you're connecting to with records that are continuously getting appended. And when I run that data, you can see the predicted values here. I'll go ahead and create a table that has all of my existing validation data as well as the predicted value. I've also imported Matplotlib to be able to create a simple scatter plot of the age of the house and the price of the house. And finally, I use the CA data connector to write to a data set in my content. I set this to overwrite any existing files. You can also set this to append existing data. I'll run everything here to make sure it's all working. What I'll end up doing is setting this notebook to run on a job so that the data set continuously gets appended or rewritten on a schedule. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new dashboard. I'm going to use a combination of the data set I just created as well as the visualization within the notebook to fill the dashboard. Go ahead and you can see the data set I just created. I'm going to bring in transaction date and the price of the house. And automatically a scatter chart is created for me. I'm also going to do the same thing with the transaction date and the prediction of the housing price. And I'll put those side by side. And finally, if I go to my widgets toolbar, there's going to be an option under advanced called notebook, which I can now drag into my dashboard. Once I drag that in, I'll select my notebook.
And now I'm given the option to display which of the outputs exist in the notebook. I'm going to go ahead and select the scatter plot I created and reformat that. Now this is a great example of how you can use visualizations created in Cognos off data sets generated in the notebook as well as visualizations created in the notebook itself. It's really cool because you're combining all the visualizations available in Cognos as well as other libraries you can import into Jupyter Notebook. Finally, I want to visually check the accuracy of my model with regards to the transaction date. I'm going to go ahead and create a new measure, which is going to be the difference between my predicted housing value and the actual housing value. I'll then go ahead and plot that new measure against transaction date. Change the visualization to a column chart. And sort appropriately. From here, I'll be able to identify any outliers or inconsistencies with my data and learn more about it. And from here, I can go back to my notebook, make adjustments to my model, and then come back to this dashboard and analyze more visualizations. What you've seen in this simple example is an abbreviated analytics cycle. We've explored our data, we've reported on this information, we've predicted, and we can prescribe once our model is tuned. Now, while this example clearly doesn't show the complexity of a full analytic cycle, it does demonstrate how people from different roles in the decision-making process can now socialize through a single platform. Whether you're a data scientist, a consumer, or even a supply chain expert, you can now participate in this analytics process in a single platform to make more efficient and accurate decisions. And that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at mzil at qubit.com. For more information on the services and solutions that Qubit provides, go to qubit.com.